Washington State, named after the first president of America, borders the Pacific Ocean to the west. It's nicknamed the Evergreen State for its abundant evergreen forests. Washington is famous for its agricultural biodiversity and its rich and proud logging history. It is home to a variety of wildlife and an array of plant species. land of the free and the home of the brave, not only to Americans, but also to a certain reckless species. American bullfrogs, Washington's state invaders. Although native to eastern parts of America, the bullfrog is considered invasive to the west. They were brought over by humans from the east during the Great Depression of the 1900s as a food source. So how have these wily amphibians wreaked such ecological havoc on this state? They begin their lives as mere legless tadpoles as so many frogs do. In late May, the female lays sacks of up to 20,000 eggs, and within two to three days, those eggs develop into tadpoles, measuring approximately two to three inches long. After roughly one year, tadpoles develop their hind legs, then their arms. Their tails begin to shorten, and they develop lungs, and their gills disappear. However, it still lives in water. During the next stage, the tadpole turns into a froglet, an almost mature bullfrog. They can breathe oxygen and jump on land, but still have a small tail. After two to three years, the transformation is complete, the tail disappears, and the adult frog now breathes oxygen. A male adult bullfrog can grow up to six inches, their eardrum, known as the tympanic membrane, on the side of their head is larger than their eye, and their throat is a bright yellow colour. Females are approximately one and a half times bigger than males, growing up to seven or eight inches long. Their eardrum is a similar or even smaller size than their eye, and they have a white throat and underside. They don't have huge teeth, sharp claws, or exceptional running abilities, so how have they managed to become an invasive species? Simple, because they will eat anything. Insects, rodents, birds, other amphibians, making it a truly ruthless state invader. As darkness falls, male bullfrogs start calling, getting their name from this bellowing, bull-like mating call. Bullfrogs hunt by sitting and waiting for food to swim, walk or fly by, then lunge at their prey once it's in front of it, making nighttime perfect for sitting for long periods of time without the threat of predators. Not that they have many. 
but until a meal arrives, they sit and wait. And wait. And wait. Nighttime is also an ideal time for young bullfrogs to be out. Even though bullfrogs have very few natural predators, it is less likely for them to be seen at night. This lake, known as Turtle Lake, got its name from the previous inhabitants, the Western Pond Turtle. But of course, when the bullfrogs arrived, that all changed, eating them out of house and home, literally. However, the bullfrogs are not alone on the lake. They share it with many different species, including this reptile. The common garter snake is the most wide-ranging reptile in North America, adults on average measuring 34 inches long. It feeds on rodents, insects and amphibians. Despite this, it is thought that bullfrog tadpoles have an unappetizing taste, so it's rare to find a garter snake feeding on bullfrog tadpoles, or at least, not more than once. Success comes easy for a bullfrog. They can thrive in warm waters of man-made and natural ponds, marshes, streams, and reservoirs. They can even tolerate muddy and polluted waters better than most native frogs. They can survive dramatic weather changes. Their body temperatures may drop virtually to freezing point, hibernating by burying themselves and absorbing oxygen through their slimy skin. As well as their capabilities in water, they are able to travel overland for up to a mile to seek new territories. The competition doesn't stand a chance. numbers decreasing. For now they will continue to thrive wherever there is water and food. And considering they'll eat almost anything, finding a suitable habitat isn't difficult. Elsewhere in the state, efforts are being made to increase the numbers of western pond turtles, then introduce them into areas where the bullfrogs are not. Evicting this state squatter is a tricky and often futile task, one that is not for the faint-hearted. But until humans can find a way to rid themselves of these frogs, nature is taking matters into its own hands. Thank you.